Nah. When I finished the tunnel yesterday and got on to the mooring, it was around 11 o'clock and looking forward to having today off. But yesterday, after about three hours of sitting in my chair, watching some videos and drinking several cups of tea, I realised that I didn't want to spend today doing exactly the same. So I'm moving about a mile or three it's further along the canal to a better mooring. The other reason for moving is that there was virtually no mobile internet whatsoever. Currently passing the outskirts of Tunstall and Stoke-on-Trent is around about three and a half miles away. On the way there's the historically and industrially significant town of Middleport and the Middleport Pottery. Whether it's still an active pottery or not, I'm not quite sure. A few twists and turns and a boatyard. And along there somewhere, I will find a mooring for the rest of the week. The salt and iron industries may be less predominant, but it's been replaced by other industries, such as warehousing and transport. looks like what would have been an arm going into what is now a long gone industrial area but by the looks of it it's being replaced by new buildings and new industry well well this looks promising only about a mile further on and we're on the edge of Tunstall here and I would say that as there's moored boats, it must be a fairly good place to moor up. And no doubt a shop of some description nearby. I don't really fancy it. The main issue being that the sides are so high my gunnels are going under those wooden edges and the rings are spaced exactly the same distance as my bow and stern mooring dollies. So I would spend the entire week getting pushed 
forwards and backwards by passing boats. One of several bottle-shaped kilns around here. Well, this is Middleport. And the first boatyard I've seen for quite some time now. change of plan I'm thinking. Over the last couple of weeks I've been hearing conflicting reports about Stoke-on-Trent which we're on the outskirts and approaching now. Some say yeah you can moor up there and lovely great place. Others Ooh, don't don't do Stoke-on-Trent mate. Says you yeah, either moor up outside it which I tried to do back there or carry on and do the five locks, which aren't so bad because they're all downhill. Once again, moorings and mooring rings, but no boats. Hmm. I mean, it looks harmless enough. The name of a Truria keeps popping up, which is a little area before the main sort of part of Stoke. I've no objections to mooring anywhere on the canal system. I'm not too bothered about the scenery or noises or what have you. The areas themselves are completely harmless. The main problem is, uh, well, I'll be careful. You know what I mean. Yeah, I'm gonna make a, a long day of it, I think. 
time is not pressing upon me, I'm going to get through Stoke, drop down the five locks, and from then on, things are said to get uh, very lovely. I knew I'd forgotten something. Interesting. I think I'll stick to my klaxon though. Yeah, the old telly lifts, cherry pickers and scissor lifts. I've been up in plenty of those in a previous life. Yep, in my previous life, I would have been in there at a later stage in the build, installing industrial doors or petitioning. I've done many things, housing development, industry, I've even sold motorcycle clothing in a bike dealer's at the weekends. Come to think of it, I haven't really stopped since I was about 16. Take yesterday, three hours sat around, not doing a lot. And I began to feel guilty, basically, thinking of all that time that I could be using to get things done. I thought for a moment this was the junction for the Colden Canal. But it's not. It's just an old disused arm. It would make a fabulous private mooring. Well, the junction for the Colden Canal is coming up soon, and I had fully intended to do it. Unfortunately, it's closed until the 23rd of June. It was closed in the winter because they found a couple of leaks, which they fixed. And whilst they were doing that, they discovered that almost a quarter of the canal was leaking. So they've had to reline huge sections of it.
according to the Nicholson's guide, this is Etruria. And just beyond are said to be the uh, splendid moorings. And yes, there are indeed many boats moored up. The question is whether there's a gap. I imagine, with there not being that many sort of safe places, they'll be in high demand. Or maybe not. It looks to me to be very good. The issue I have is that at some point I'm going to have to run my generator. And there's houses right opposite. So I don't want to be doing that. Eh? So I'm going to go for it and do the five locks. The first of which is coming up right now. This here is the junction for the Cordon Canal, but just a little bit further on, it's closed. As I've said many times previously, I much prefer going down in a lock. Just straight up to the gate. Close the back gate. And open the front paddles. Bit of a sharp bumpy entry there. Never mind, that's what reed blacking's for. Much more pleasant. On the left here is the Etruscan Bone and Flint Mill. Bone and Flint Mill? Wow which is now an industrial museum.
on to number three. It's ten to two, so plenty of time. Time is always on my side. Time is always on my side. How does Bruce manage to reach those high notes? Uh, oh. <coughs> Many, 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 many people over the years have commented about Aslan smoking. You won't be the first, and you won't be the last. In summary though, no, it's not a problem. Many, many traditional engines smoke. That's just the way it is. Aslan's engine was rebuilt not long before I bought her. And she smoked from day one. So please, please, Yes, I know she smokes, but please stop going on about it. Please. No, they, they, they go straight. It's got a splitter and they go off like that. Yeah. Well, this is lower than Hare Castle Tunnel. Holy, what do you call it? Ugh, even the gentleman at the lock asked the same question. Doesn't the fumes from the engine bother you? I thought, well, if it did, I wouldn't do it, would I? You know, I'm not like Mr. Bean. I didn't just suddenly land in a spotlight in an alleyway somewhere. You won't find me putting a turkey on my head. Sorry about a bit of twining there. It's just every now and again, things just get a little bit too much. Say what you will about graffiti, it does strangely lend a bit of colour to an otherwise bland area. Tackle and bait, air guns, archery, boats and engines, country and western line dancing. I think they've covered all eventualities there.